Thank you very much. It's great to be with Prime Minister Modi of India, incredible country, and he's an incredible man. Just had a tremendous election victory, and uh, he really is a man who's loved and respected in this country. We're talking about trade. We're talking about military. We're talking about many different things, and we've had some great discussions. We were together last night for dinner, and uh, I learned a lot about India. Fascinating place, beautiful place, and uh, it's an honor to be with you. Cool. Uh, आज मेरे मित्र दुनिया की सबसे पुराने लोकतंत्र के महारथी श्रीमान राष्ट्रपति जी के साथ बड़ी मीटिंग बड़ी महत्वपूर्ण है जब भी मौका मिला है हम लगातार मिलते रहे हैं भारत दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा लोकतंत्र देश है करीब 700 मिलियन वोटर्स शायद दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी घटना है कि जिन्होंने पिछले दिनों चुनाव का नतीजा दिया और मैं राष्ट्रपति जी का बहुत आभारी हूँ कि उन्होंने टेलीफोन करके मुझे बधाई दी थी आज फिर एक बार उन्होंने बधाई दी है भारत और अमेरिका दोनों लोकतांत्रिक मूल्यों को लेकर के चलने वाले देश दुनिया की भलाई के लिए साथ मिल करके क्या काम कर सकते हैं किस प्रकार से योगदान दे सकते हैं हमारे कॉमन वैल्यूज मानव जात के लिए दुनिया के लिए प्रगति के लिए किस प्रकार से काम आ सकते हैं ऐसे अनेक विषयों पर बहुत गहराई से बात होती रहती है भारत का और अमेरिका का आर्थिक क्षेत्र में व्यापार के क्षेत्र में लगातार बातचीत हो रही है और कई विषयों में हम अमेरिका के सुझावों को का स्वागत करते हैं और मिलजुल करके ट्रेड के क्षेत्र में आगे बढ़ने की दिशा में हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं भारतीय समुदाय अमेरिका में भारी मात्रा में इन्वेस्टमेंट भी कर रहा है भारतीय समुदाय अमेरिका में जिस प्रकार से विकास यात्रा में भागीदार बना है अमेरिका ने जिस प्रकार से भारतीय समुदाय को आदर सत्कार और सम्मान दिया है इसके लिए मैं राष्ट्रपति ट्रंप का उनके शासन का प्रशासन का वहाँ की जनता का हृदय से बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ थैंक यू टूडे आई एम मीटिंग माय फ्रेंड एंड द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी इन द वर्ल्ड प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मीटिंग फॉर मी एंड वेन एवर वी हैव द ऑपरचुनिटी वी ऑलवेज मेट Uh, as you know india is the largest uh, democracy and uh, uh, we had uh, our elections recently where 700 million indian voters uh, chose uh, their government and uh, uh, president trump uh, had telephoned me to uh, congratulate me and uh, again today he has uh, conveyed his congratulations i'd like to thank him for that india and the united states are countries uh, who have uh, which have shared democratic values and we work for the welfare of the world and uh, whatever contribution we can make uh, in whichever way we have these uh, common values and we work for the progress of humanity for the world for uh, continuous progress we have continuous discussions on these issues uh, india and the united states we have been discussing on a continuous basis various economic uh, trade and commercial relation issues and on many of these issues we have welcomed uh, us suggestions together uh, we are working in the area of trade we are making efforts to take this forward uh, the indian community in the united states uh, has made uh, substantial investments over the years they have taken a part very actively in uh, the development path of the united states and the way the united states has showered uh, love and has embraced them as their own uh, for that i would like to thank uh, president trump his administration and the people of the united states so president can you clarify on the whether you will be on kashmir please well we spoke last night about kashmir and uh, the prime minister really feels he has it under control i know they 
they speak with Pakistan, and I'm sure that they will be able to do something that will be very good. We spoke about it last night at Great Lake. भारत और पाकिस्तान के बीच कई बायोलेटरल इश्यूज हैं और पाकिस्तान के प्रधानमंत्री के चुनाव के बाद जब मैंने उनको टेलीफोन किया था तब मैंने उनसे कहा है कि पाकिस्तान को भी गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ना है पाकिस्तान को भी अशिक्षा के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी अशिक्षा के खिलाफ लड़ना है पाकिस्तान को भी बीमारी के खिलाफ लड़ना है भारत को भी बीमारी के खिलाफ लड़ना है हम दोनों देश मिलकर के गरीबी के खिलाफ लड़ें हमारी असुविधाओं के खिलाफ लड़ें और हम मिलकर के दोनों देश की आवाम की भलाई के लिए काम करें ये संदेश मैंने पाकिस्तान के प्रधानमंत्री जी को भी लिया है और राष्ट्रपति ट्रंप से भी हमेशा हमारे इस बायोलेटर संबंधों के संबंध में बात होती रहती है Uh, between uh, India and Pakistan, uh, there are many uh, bilateral uh, issues. And after uh, uh, Im Mr. Imran Khan became the Prime Minister of Pakistan, I uh, called him up to congratulate him, and I told him that uh, Pakistan needs to fight poverty, India too. Pakistan needs to fight illiteracy, India too. Pakistan needs to fight disease, India too. And so together, let us join our forces uh, to fight. Poverty and all the ills that are facing our two countries. Let us work together to for the welfare of the people of our two countries. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the message that uh, I uh, keep giving my counterpart in Pakistan. Along with uh, President Trump, we also uh, keep talking about the different bilateral issues between us. Mr. Modi, would you like to have President Trump be involved in negotiating with Pakistan? भारत और पाकिस्तान के सारे इश्यूज बायोलेटरल हैं और इसलिए हम दुनिया के किसी भी देश को इनके लिए कष्ट नहीं देते हैं और मुझे विश्वास है कि भारत और पाकिस्तान जो 1947 के पहले एक ही थे हम मिलजुल कर के हमारी समस्याओं पर चर्चा भी कर सकते हैं और समाधान भी कर सकते हैं India and Pakistan uh, have uh, uh, all the issues are of bilateral nature and uh, we do not want to give pains to any country in the world uh, to uh, in fact uh, uh, try to do anything in this because these issues are bilateral and I trust that uh, before 1947 when we were one country then even afterwards we can find solutions through discussions. I'm here. I have a very good relationship with both gentlemen, and I'm here, uh, if for any reason. But I think they can do it themselves very well. They've been doing it for a long time. Mr. President, the Chinese have said today publicly that the, the more low-level calls that have happened, and they're downplaying the significance of the calls the U.S. administration. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Low-level? Uh, the vice premier is low-level? I don't think so. I mean, it's in your mind they're low-level. Uh, what is the position of the gentleman that was quoted in the newspaper today? Right. Well, the Vice Premier Vice Leo Ho came out with a very significant statements, and we've been communicating uh, through intermediaries back and forth with him. He's uh, the Vice Premier of China. Yes, sir. I but that's not low level. I understand. I agree. Uh, I mean, just, uh, there was a statement that uh, was spoken with the foreign ministry president. I don't know about a statement. They weren't aware of the call happening. I don't know about a statement. There's been communication going at, back. At the right. highest level. Right. At the highest level. Okay. No, I don't want to. We don't want to go into. We don't want to go into. Hey, look. In the meantime, our country is doing great. We're doing great. The prime minister just congratulated me. Everybody that's met has congratulated us on the job we're doing in the United States with our economy. Our economy is phenomenal, best it's ever been, and that's despite the trade deals. And when the trade deals get done, like we did with Japan yesterday, we did a really big, tremendous trade deal with Japan. And we have others coming. We're negotiating now in earnest with the European Union, and because they want to do that, they want to do that, and I do too. So we have. When we get these deals done, this our country will be transformed. I mean, it'll be monetarily transformed. It's such a difference between the horrible, horrible one-sided deals that we had in the past, and frankly, past administrations should be ashamed of themselves. 
for allowing that. But we have many of them. One of them is the USMCA, Mexico-Canada. And hopefully that'll get uh, voted on very quickly. Everybody wants it to happen, so hopefully we can make that a bipartisan bill. But we have many trade deals that are doing very well, and including China. And I think it was necessary to go through this, uh, you would say, a rough patch, but I'd say maybe much more than a rough patch. But that's okay, because we've been paid billions and billions of dollars. And you know that prices haven't gone up, and there's been no inflation, and we've put a lot of money in the Treasury, and, uh, you know, tens of billions of dollars. And I've given a lot of it to the farmers that were hurt. I've been able to give a lot of money, compliments of China, to the farmers that were hurt, because they were — we gave them $16 billion, and we gave them $12 billion the year before. That made them whole. That was the amount of money that China didn't invest in our — to our farmers, give to our farmers. So the farmers have been amazing, but they're very happy with the job we're doing. But eventually, they're going to be the biggest or one of the biggest beneficiaries, okay? Did you uh, you, 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 you the private session? Say it. Did you uh, make it to the private session? Were there any conclusions that you could I'm going out? to. In fact, it's going to be our next session. So we haven't had it yet. Do you have a message that you'd like to deliver to? No, I want clean air and clean water. And we're right now having the cleanest air and cleanest water on the planet. But that's what I want. I want absolutely clean air and clean water. Mr. President, just briefly back on time. We saw the comments coming in from you about wanting calm. Um, calm. Calm, exactly. Just wondering if you could clarify what you meant about the call. Is that with Mr. Lighthizer? I, I don't want to talk about calls. We've had calls. We've had calls at the highest levels. But last I don't want to talk about, about that. Night, the but the call. vice chairman put out a statement last night that was a statement and saying that he wants to make a deal and he wants calm. And I think it's a very good word to use, calm. Not a word that I use that often, but it's a good word to use. And I think it's one of the reasons that's a great country. I mean, they understand. I think that that message also helps with respect to Hong Kong. I really do. I think it makes it easier for Hong Kong to do something. And I think that President Xi will do something with Hong Kong. I really think that message is a good message with respect to what the ultimate outcome is in Hong Kong. Very, very positive message. And uh, we appreciated it. We appreciated it. What else? Anything else? Mr. President, what are your uh, latest thoughts on your effect on pulling out of the WTO? And if you do, can I also ask Mr. President only what your response to that in, in terms of how it's affecting the administration? Well, we haven't been happy with the WTO, but now we're winning cases. We won the big Airbus cases, you know. And it's a tremendous case. I mean, it's uh, billions of dollars. That was a very recent victory, and we're winning cases now. And we're being treated more fairly now in the WTO, which we appreciate. He actually speaks very good English. We just don't want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I, think that, uh, I think that uh, you should uh, let us uh, discuss these things, and when we feel the need, we will communicate to you. Russia has just recently said they have no intention of asking um, to be readmitted uh, to the G7. Uh, however, no, I wouldn't expect they'd ask because why would he's a proud man? He's done a a real job, and why would he ask? No, it's something we discussed, and it's under discussion now. No votes or anything, but uh, I would be inclined to say yes, and so would others, and some probably wouldn't be, but it's just a discussion. No, I would think that he wouldn't do that because he's a proud man. He wouldn't ask, but uh, if something would happen, he would be asked, and I, I'm sure he would say yes to that. Do you have any indication from them that they would accept? Is no, that I, I think it was a very good discussion. It was the initial discussion, but it was a very good discussion. But I think it would be appropriate. I think it was it would be good for Russia. I think it would be good for everybody. I think it, it would be a positive. But it's just a discussion that we had. It was a very interesting discussion and very, uh, I think, pretty even. I think ultimately people like the idea. Mr. President, what would be your message to the American people in terms of what is your biggest achievement at this G7? Well, we've had a lot of achievements. Uh, we have an achievement with 
Prime Minister Modi, because we're doing great trade. We're doing a lot of trade with India. That's an achievement. I think, obviously, the Japan deal is a tremendous achievement because it's one of the biggest trade deals, and it affects directly our farmers. Even the fact that he's taking all of the excess corn that China didn't take, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of corn, and he's buying that. Japan is buying all of that corn at a fair price. And, uh, you know, that was great. So that was very important. I also think that unity is very important. You know, we had a very good, despite you read the newspaper stories, the stories bear no resemblance to what's taking place. You saw me with Chancellor Merkel. You saw me with all of them. The relationship is great. We have seven nations. In addition to that, we have other nations like India and others that came in. Australia came in, Scott. We have a lot of people came in. And I'll tell you, it's been total unity. Uh, there's, be been no there's been no dissension. There's been no dissension. There's been no fights or arguments. There's been no, no anything. I mean, we have. We, there's been great unity here, and honestly, the papers haven't reported how good it's been. So, what would be your most common ground? You know, is it climate change? Is it gender? Oh, oh, I think we have a lot of things, but I think really the unity, the the uh, the fact that we're all getting along so well, I think is one of the big takes from this. We really have good relationships. And we're doing a lot about a lot. Okay? Just so we get our reporting right, I'm going to get a little more crack on that. When you were referring earlier to a blue state that we all saw, did you mean to say that there was also a call last night, or was there not actually a call? There were discussions that went back and forth. Let's just leave it at that. Last night. And last before last night. Yes. Yeah. Last night. Which China? And before last night. Yeah. <coughs> Numerous. But they want to get something done. I've been saying that for a long reason. And what, why, why wouldn't they? They want to get something done. They've lost millions of jobs. Their supply chains are being hurt. And once those supply chains go, you're going to develop new supply chains. You can't get them back into China. So China is, is run by really a great leader. I think he's a great leader. He wants to do something. They lost over 3 million jobs in a very short period of time. A lot of companies have left China, and they're leaving China. They want to get it done. I knew that. I could have told you that without talking, but we are talking. And would you still like to see U.S. companies leave China? Depends on whether or not we make a deal. If we don't make a deal, I'd like to see them leave China. Absolutely. If we make a deal, I'd like to see them stay there and do a great job. Mr. President, the Afghanistan peace talks, you have a timeline of No timeline. Whatever it is. We're no rush. I mean, we're there. We're really a police-keeping force more than anything else, frankly. And uh, said so we could win that war in a very short period of time, but I'm not looking to kill 10 million people, okay? And we are uh, working along with the Taliban, with the government, and other people, too. And we'll see what happens. No timeline. Thank you very much. Hey, we're so we're going to be doing a news conference in a little while. So. This one where if I think, this if one you thing. need one, do you need one? I don't thank think you, you need one. I mean, I can't imagine any other question. Uh, I just want to thank, though, the Prime Minister. This is a great leader right here. A great you, leader with, you a great, with a great weapons? election result. Would thank you allow me to have nuclear weapons, sir? Thank you very much. Would you allow India to have nuclear weapons?